YouTube. What's going on? It's Mesa Sean back at it with some Destiny 2. All right, folks, apologies if my voice is about an octave lower. I just got back from Guardian Con, and in this video, we're going to round up all the news regarding Destiny 2 and also, of course, Destiny 2 Forsaken. Now, this Guardian Con was the first Guardian Con that Bungie had an official booth at, and they had Gambit playable on the show floor. And oh my god, I'm showing you a clip on screen right now. As soon as they let the doors open, everyone just beelined it right for the bungee booth to get some hands-on time with Gambit. And everyone that I got to speak with that came by the Guardian Radio booth was pretty excited. Uh, they had a lot of fun playing Gambit. They wanted to play more. I met a few people who braved the line for two days in a row, waiting four to five hours to play it again. They loved it. Everyone is hyped for Gambit. They're hyped for Forsaken. And uh, guys, meeting so many of my subscribers and uh, listeners of Guardian Radio, man, it was it was really, really humbling. You guys are far too nice to me. All right, enough of my babble. Let's get into the news, guys. So this Tuesday on July 17th, we're getting a lot of things. We're getting update 1.2.3. We're going to go through some of those things today, and then I'll make a full video on all the patch notes on Tuesday. We will have the final faction rallies of Season 3 this Tuesday. Rumble is going to be a permanent playlist in the Crucible. We are getting 6v6 quick play. And Supremacy is going to be the rotating Crucible playlist for next week. Which I don't like, guys. You know, I like Supremacy. I don't think it should have a rotating playlist. Because then I'm forced to only play Control and Clash. And I personally, I don't like Clash. I like Control, though. But Supremacy, yeah, it's going to be a rotating Crucible playlist. But let me know in the comments section. Do you want it in quick play? Or do you want it in a rotating playlist? Next up, bounties are returning to Destiny 2 with 1.2.3. And you could totally tell this is in preparation for Forsaken. So let me read you some quotes from the This Week at Bungie from senior design lead Tyson Green. The bounties returning to Destiny 2 in update 1.2.3 are a return to most of the properties of bounties in the Taken King. They will be obtained from a variety of vendors. They will generally award XP and faction reputation, though some will offer even better rewards. You can also get legendary weapons and can be redeemed in the field to immediately claim your rewards. In Forsaken, you may also see some bounties drop in the wild. Now, to me, this screams exotic bounties are coming back, and I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, yeah, they're definitely coming back. When they say here, all right, though some will offer even better rewards, well, what's better than faction reputation, XP, and legendary weapons? Well, exotics, of course, and that's been something the community has been asking for for a very long time. But it was really interesting for Tyson to say that faction reputation is coming back. I mean, perhaps they're eventually going to phase out the token system. Just go back to the way it was in D1, where you cashed in a bounty, whether it was Crucible or Vanguard. You got some Vanguard rep, you got Crucible rep, but then you also got some faction reputation. So we'll have to see how this pans out. Maybe they just mean when the next faction rallies hit, or maybe this week we'll have bounties. And if we do them, we'll get some rep with whatever faction we're pledging to. And let me know in the comments section, which faction are you pledging to this time? I did Future War Cult. I did uh, Dead Orbit. I think I'm probably going to go for Pneumonic this time just to get the sweet business catalyst and complete the whole collection. Now, Tyson goes on to say that there are two new mechanics. Bounties will expire if left uncompleted, and acquiring them will cost you a small amount of glimmer. We wanted to avoid the whole grab every bounty you see until your inventory is packed and sort them out later experience without constraining players to the tiny inventory they found in previous iterations of the game. In Forsaken, more vendors will have more bounties on offer, and some will provide legendary or better rewards for completing them. It's fair to observe that we didn't answer every question you might ask about the return of bounties, but what would the fun be in that? You'll discover exactly how they work and where you can find them next week and in all the weeks that will follow. Now, Bungie also felt that some of the modifiers we have in the game, the debuff modifiers, were a little too powerful. So they're making some adjustments this week to Blackout, Grounded, and Glass. So here's what they're doing to Blackout. It says, this modifier is changing somewhat. It still increases enemy melee damage significantly, but is now no longer a guarantee of players being defeated by a single melee from many enemies. Be careful though, if you're not at the recommended power for the Heroic Strike playlist, your enemies will be more powerful and pack a harder punch. Now for Grounded, they say here, there are many times the players are considered airborne when they're not actually jumping. To account for that, we are reducing the damage threshold so players aren't punished for things outside of their control. Additionally, we are looking to prevent players from falling to their demise from a height of 2 meters, just as they happen to land on a rock or some other small object. 
Now, Glass. This modifier reduces a Guardian's shield and health while increasing their recovery. We slightly reduce the impact of this modifier to better enable players to see the effects of their overall power progression over time. Now, also the Prismatic Matrix, that's going on a little bit of a hiatus, and they said that it will come back with Forsaken and that they've learned a lot on how to make it better. I mean, for myself, I think I maybe got one or two items that I actually needed. It seemed like every time I went to go check each week, uh, it said I had everything because I just got everything from either buying things with Bright Dust or from collecting Bright Engrams. Now let's move into some Forsaken news coming out of Game Informer and some new video clips which I will link in the description. But check out this clip here of the new Sunbreaker Super. This Titan looks like he's on board the Dreadnought. And, you know, I saw this on social media, I saw it on Reddit, and everyone was like, Dreadnought spotted. And this room does look like the Dreadnought. Look at the walls, look at the architecture, uh, look at the hive that he's fighting. I don't know, I'm leaning towards no, but let me hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Do you think this is the Dreadnought? We know the Dreadnought's coming eventually. This could just be a Hive tomb ship or something that we have a special mission to go on because the Hive, they will be on the Tangled Shore, we know that. But when we look at the ending cutscene for Destiny 2, we know the Dreadnought, we will be going there at some point and it will be coming after the Reef. So I'm leaning towards that it is not the Dreadnought, but sound off in the comment section. Is it the Dreadnought? And if not, well, what is it? Is it a Hive tomb ship? What do you think? We also have some new gameplay of the different types of Scorn that we will be facing with for Forsaken. Now, Dell from Bungie, in his exact words, he said, we build these factions so that they work in all different activities. He also said it would be awesome if we had a Scorn raid someday. So that right there is that confirmation that, okay, the Scorn, they're just going to be in the campaign. They're going to be on the Tangled Shore. Uh, they're going to be in the Dreaming City, I'm pretty sure. But it looks like the raid's not going to revolve around the Scorn. So the only logical thought is, okay, the Taken. We know the Taken are part of the DLC. We've seen them in numerous clips. So I have a feeling, now my hypothesis is going to be, Savathun, and it's going to involve the Taken, because Savathun is controlling the Taken right now in Destiny 2, so it just makes sense, but I was kind of hoping that we were going to have some huge, big fallen raid boss that was going to be Scorn. We know the raid boss is going to be female. Joe Blackburn did state that on Twitter, I think by accident, so we could say it's Marasov, or it could be Savathun. What do you think in the comment section? Now let's go through the different types of Scorn. So right here we have what's called the Screeb. Now, these Scorn run around on all fours and they explode, but they have a much bigger blast radius than your typical Cursed Thrall. Not only do they run around on all fours and explode near you, they also jump in the air, so they're kind of like all over the place and pretty menacing. Next up, we have what's called the Lurkers. Now, these guys are kind of similar to the Gabal in that they have a shield, so you kind of have to shoot around the shield to get them to die. However, they're much more aggressive and they like to roam around in packs. So you're trying to take one out with a shield is going to be his lurker friend right next to him with another shield that you have to go through. This next type of scorn they referred to as the racer and they said this one's like a fanatic. It goes crazy when it sees you. And Steve Cotton said you'll see them out and about just kind of worshipping fire pits and other things and then as soon as they see you they go crazy and just start running after you trying to kill you with those flaming torches. Next up we have the ravagers and it says here that these hunchback skulkers who charge at first sight, spinning lantern-like sensors that slam into the ground to create a gout of solar flame. But their crit spot is actually the little sensor, and if you shoot it, it will blow up. So you're not actually aiming for their crit spot on their head, you're aiming for those sensors. And as they start charging you, they start spinning them around, so it makes it a little bit harder to get that crit hit on them. Then we have the Raider. Now this thing has a sniper, it's got a crossbow, but it also shoots an explosive saw blade weapon at you. And it looks like when it gets in a bad situation, it has a smoke dash where it's gonna take off, but you can kind of see the trail of smoke as to where they're going. Next up, we have the Chieftains. Now these guys are gonna put down a totem and it could be either Void, Solar, or Arc. Now for the Solar Totem, it basically acts as like an area of denial if you step in it, you're gonna get burned so you got to take out that totem and then you could take down that chieftain now the void chieftains they're gonna put down a totem that's gonna tether anything in a medium range distance from that totem and basically give them a shield so you got to get them either out of the radius of that totem or you got to take out the totem before you could take out the chieftain now the video I will link in the description but they also talk about the barons that you face in the campaign but I don't want to spoil anything for you guys so don't watch that video if you want to be spoiled but they kind of talk a little bit at the end about how each 
to the Baron's work. So that's it, guys. Babble Mode's engaged. Leave me a hashtag made it to the end if you did make it to the end. And do me a favor. Drop a like on this video only if you see fit. Follow me on the Twitter at MesaShawn. Check out my stream, usually and always on YouTube. And that is it. I am out of here like Vladimir. Vladimir.